If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and I'm delighted to be back with you again. As I record this, it's just a few days before I leave for the Vacation Rental Managers Association conference in Amsterdam. And uh, as I publish this, I'll be uh, flying home. So, uh, yeah, that will be it. That will be probably most of my travels done for the year, actually. And uh, of course, I will be bringing you all the all the news, everything I, I heard about at the Vacation Rental Management Association conference in a, a podcast coming up very, very soon. But for now, in this episode, I want to talk about um, something that's sort of personal to me, because at this time of year, as as you know, if you listen to my podcasts, I've uh, I've been to my February vacation destination, and I've usually at this time we're now starting to plan next year's, and we do try and go somewhere different every year, and I know a couple of years uh, we went to the Bahamas each year. We went to Eleuthera and a couple of times to Exuma around about the time we were buying some land, so. It was it was really important to get to grips with the islands and what we wanted to what we wanted to buy. So we we went back to those places, but usually we'll choose somewhere different. So we are on the hunt for somewhere new for February two thousand and eighteen, and next year we are going with, or my, my husband and I are going with Mike and Andrea and their children. We decided we'll do another family vacation, which we haven't done for quite a few years. So that's. That's a lot of fun. The girls are going to be uh, five, uh, four and five at that time. So it will be such a lot of fun. They're really going to get a lot out of it. So we want to go somewhere that's, that's interesting, somewhere that's going to uh, capture their imagination, keep them busy, but also meets the needs of the rest of us. You know, um, I love to run. I love to um, explore, get out into the great outdoors uh, Phil likes to, his his favorite part of his vacation is like most people, he just likes to sit by a pool and read books, just catch up on the stuff that he doesn't do because he works so hard for the rest of the year. Mike usually looks for something a little bit more adventurous, things like um, kite surfing and, uh, I don't know, what else? White, white water rafting, I guess, I'm just throwing that in, I'm, I'm I'm not sure actually if if this that is something he's interested in, but he he just likes that more adventurous side of it. Whereas uh, whereas Andrea's Andrea enjoys getting out and about and and seeing the country. You know, we'll go way well might go well watching, do a jungle tour, that sort of thing. So it looks like we have we have settled on Nicaragua for next year, but you know we're willing to be persuaded otherwise. We've got nothing booked. The, the most enjoyable part, and I've, I've, I've often said that the most enjoyable part of a vacation is the anticipation. For me anyway, it's the planning, it's the thinking about where we're going to go, what the, what the place is like. So often they are new places we've never been before. So I want to do a lot of research beforehand, a lot of, uh, a lot of planning on day trips and things that we want to go do, go see, you know, usual stuff for vacation. We're no different from any other any other family. I guess, you know, one difference from the general run-of-the-mill family is that we are always looking for vacation rental. It's never, we'll never be looking for a resort or a hotel or a timeshare or anything like that. We are, we want the vacation rental. And that is usually the first the first thing we choose, we can often choose 
a property before we decided on the location. We come across a property, it's like, oh my God, this is the one. And yeah, let's take a look at where it is. Oh, Costa Rica. Well, that sounds cool. We'll go there. I mean, that's what happened a few years ago when we went to flying toucans in Costa Rica. Somehow, I don't know how I came across the picture of a picture of flying toucans. It was a feature photo, which is something I'm going to be talking about in a moment. And it was an amazing picture. And it was that photograph that just captured me and said, we are going to this place come what may. So that gives you some sort of indication of what I'm going to be talking about today. And I've I've titled it 10 Reasons I Won't Be Inquiring About Your Property. Because it's a little sad, actually, to see so many mistakes being made on listings that are such an immediate turnoff. And I, I don't know... I don't know if it's thoughtlessness or if it's things being done in a hurry, but I'm finding that in such a competitive environment now that there are so many listings that are so easily discarded because the person putting up the listing, and I'm not saying it's always an owner, it's often a management company, they're putting up the listing with no thought as to how that listing is impacting The person who is doing what I'm doing now, which is couch surfing for my vacation next year. Now, I'm not saying I am the typical vacationer. I I don't know what the typical vacationer is, but I may well be somebody's avatar, somebody's persona, their demographic, their target market, the one that they're looking for and wanting to book their place. And if so, they need to be taking care of how they present that listing. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the 10 reasons I won't be inquiring about your property and going through each of the issues that I come across on a website, uh, on, on a listing site, that is a complete turn off. And I do mean complete turnoff because I've seen so many properties that I've just thought, yep, not going there. I am not even not even going into the listing to look at more photos or to look at more text or look at the dates if they see if they're available. I'm just not going there because there's been one or more of these errors made when that listing has been published. So let's kick off. As I say, I'm not typical. I know I'm not typical. This is very personal to me. I'm sure I'm going to have people who who will argue against some of these things. But, you know, my podcast, I can say what I want, really. So (laughs) here you go. You are you are getting this. This is my personal 10 reasons I won't inquire about a property. So the first one is, and this goes back to what I was just saying about flying toucans. If the feature photo is ugly, why would I even think about going any any further? Or if the feature photo doesn't, it's not necessarily ugly. No, that's probably a wrong way of putting it. If the feature photo doesn't immediately grab my attention and make me go, oh, wow. I want to look further at this. If there's a lot of competition, I'm just going to be moving on to the rest. I'm scrolling through and your property, if your property is the one with a poor feature photo, you've just lost my attention. And if I'm having to look through three or 400 options, you're not going to get that attention back. So what do I class as an ugly picture. As I say, not necessarily ugly. It might be the wrong word. But a picture that's not going to grab my attention is in general an exterior, just the plain exterior photo. And this this is interesting. When you, I was looking at uh, properties in Orlando a while back because I'm, I'm going down to the 
Vacation Rental Management Association annual conference in Orlando in uh, October. And we're taking our RV. So we'll park the RV in a in a, a local RV site and probably stay there. But we were thinking about bringing some family out, perhaps from England, to come to Disney. I mean, we're going to be in Orlando. We could get together with some family and after the conference go to Disney for a few days. So that got me, you know, as, as I usually do, down the rabbit hole, looking at, at properties in Orlando. Now, I've, I've been to Orlando once. I went and met up with my friend Erica Muller, we had a we had a great uh, we had a, a, a great evening of filming actually um, a couple of about a year ago, and I was also at a podcast conference there, uh, which was uh, downtown Disney Village, which was lovely, and I'd I'd never been there before, but I've I've never looked at vacation rentals in that area, so I thought well I'll I'll just look at where. Um, you know where I'm going for the conference, where the where Disney is, and see if I can find a, a vacation rental that's in that vicinity. There are so many vacation rentals there that just show me the photograph of a driveway in a garage and this bland exterior of a property, and it it says absolutely nothing about the place. And there's hundreds of others. I'm just not interested. I am immediately going on to the next one. I'm going on to the one that has the great picture of the pool of the swimming pool or I saw one I saw a couple that had photographs of fireworks at Disney and I'm going to go on in a second about the headlines but you know when the photo and the headlines match so the photo of the fireworks and the headline said watch the Disney fireworks from your balcony wow that that was a real attention grabber the same for Outer Banks. I've been looking at Outer Banks properties as well. After I talked to Michael Hamilton recently, who is um, who who came on the show to talk about his investment properties in the Outer Banks, and so I was looking at Outer Banks properties, and once again, you often get these these pictures of the house. Now those houses are very very similar. And there's hundreds of them, all looking very much the same. They're up on stilts. They've got three or four levels. They look spectacular, but they're all the same. So the ones that attract my attention were the views, the views from a, the views from a deck, the views from a balcony. If, they're, if you've got oceanfront views, if you've got a sunrise view or a sunset view, give me that one. Give me the picture of the beautiful pool, the sunset the beachfront, as long as it's the one in front of the property. And if you haven't got those views, and and quite understandably, some people don't have the views, then what do you want to happen? You want to get me, the visitor to your listing, to go inside your property and, and see how fabulous you've made it look inside. And I want you to show me a fabulous interior picture. I don't need to see the outside. If, if necessary, I'll go to the other, the other pictures and see the outside. But if it's not going to, just, just think about what is it about your feature photo that's going to have maximum impact and attract your guests to, your potential guests, to look further. You're not needing to get them to book from that photo. You want them to get into your listing and you want them to spend more time. You want more eyes on that page. You want them to look at your other photos. So number one, if your feature photo doesn't grab my attention, I'm not going to be inquiring about your property. So just, I, I'm doing this myself, actually. In this exercise, you know, I'm not including myself or my company from this. And I'm going to start going back through all our VRBO and HomeAway listings and just see what photograph we're putting on the front uh, as the feature. And is that is that attracting the people we want to attract? I remember a while back, again, you know, it was a VRMA conference and I, I met a couple from Idaho. And I, this one always sticks in my mind because I think I did, I think I did a, 
a, a, an interview afterwards with them. I'll have to track that one down because I looked at their listing and it was in um, a small town in, in Idaho. It's a tourist, it's a touristy town. So it attracts, you know, quite a lot of people. And the, uh, the, the picture that they had was of a, a deck. This was their feature photo, which was a deck with a couple of bicycles leaning up against it. And there was a big tub of flowers. And it just, it, it, I don't know what it was that attracted me so much about this. But they said their demographic, the people they were looking to attract, were, were um, usually couples or small families that were going to come and use the bicycles they provided and travel around and enjoy the area. And their feature photo was targeted directly to their uh, target market. Um, I love that. That was, that. that was such a great idea. So be creative, but don't give me an ugly pic. Okay, number two. This leads on straight from your feature photos and goes into your headline. And, and I know many of you, you work so hard at getting this headline right, and so you should, because if the headline doesn't grab someone in a sea of similar properties, people are going to move on to the next one. And I've got a couple of examples here that I just pulled out at random. I mean, really random. I just went VRBO. I as random as I could, because I had to go to a particular area. I went to the Outer Banks because I was looking there at the time anyway. And, and I, I sort of pulled out some headlines that were boring. And so, so here's a couple. Large and lux- luxurious five-bedroom house, three, 3.5 bathrooms, sleeps 12, dogs okay. Book now and save. Okay, there is a lot wrong with that headline. Um, and I'll tell you one thing, the one thing that really turned me off that one, even though, I, even though when I go away, I don't take my dog to a vacation rental, rarely, but it was dogs okay. If you're going to be pet friendly, you want to attract people with dogs and they want to feel welcome. So if you're going to say anything about pets, then you're going to put pet friendly or pets welcome or we love your pets, don't put dogs okay, because that's an immediate turn off to any uh, pet owner, because they're already feeling that, yeah, I'd like to take my pet, but these people just think they're okay. And there's plenty of others that are going to welcome my pet. What else is wrong with that? Um, Why put five bedroom house, 3.5 bathrooms? That's already just on the right-hand side. People have probably um, selected their criteria. You never, ever need to put, to, to use that valuable real estate to say how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, and how many it sleeps. That is entirely unnecessary. Uh, large and luxurious, to some degree, you know, spacious. People like that word spacious. They want, they want to get that idea of space. But uh, I, th- th- there's better ways. There's better ways of promoting a property in a headline. And then finally, book now and save. Yeah, that, that, that's not grabbing me. Um, I'm doing research. Um, I, I, I just don't need, I don't, need that in a headline. It's not going to make me do anything. So here's another one. Now booking for your 2017 Outer Banks beach vacation. Well, yes. If you've got a listing, then you're probably now booking for 2017. So that was a complete waste of time. Um, So others that are a little bit different, but perhaps just not quite getting it. One said, amazing little cottage for many reasons. And I, and I think possibly when the owner put this as a headline, they thought, oh yeah, this is going to grab the attention of somebody who's wanting to look in to, to see what these other reasons are. But I don't think that's going to happen. Amazing little cottage for many reasons. Um, my time is valuable or anybody's time is valuable. Those people who are looking at a listing So you've got to give them a little bit more to go on. Um, Respect, 
their time. So any headline that is the way we're trying to be a little bit a little bit mysterious, I don't think that works. It it needs in the headline you've got to have stuff that's going to pull your audience in. Going back to flying toucans, I I seem to recall that the headline was was something like Infinity Pool. That always does it for me. Um, uh, monkeys and t- monkeys, toucans and sloths seen every day. Well, that was it. I'm done. You have got me. I That's one reason I want to go to Costa Rica because I want to see the wildlife. So you have pulled me in immediately by telling me that I'm going to achieve my goals on this vacation by coming to your place. I'm going to see howler monkeys. I'm going to see toucans. I'm going to see sloths and maybe other wildlife. But it's just seen every day. Wow. That that was a an attention-grabbing headline. Um, here's a couple that, that do it better. There was one that said, oceanfront gem nestled in the dunes with endless ocean sunrises. There's a lot of emotion captured in that one. I love that sort of nestled in the dunes. It, um, it, it, it's very evocative of um, privacy and cozy and, and this sort of get away from it all style of vacation. You know, endless ocean sunrises. Well, you know, I think we all know that sunrises aren't endless. They just come up every day. But just the way that that was put together with being nestled in the dunes with the endless ocean sunrises, I quite, I quite liked that. You know, it, it was attention grabbing. And then one that you often see, and there's nothing wrong with these, and it just pulls in, it just, it pulls in all the features that your target market wants. And this one is hot tub, pet friendly, oceanside short walk to beach. That that does it. If those are my criteria, you've just gi- I don't have to search in a listing for the criteria. You've just given them to me. You've told me it's got a hot tub which is which I may have included in my filter to to find the properties to look for, but I may not. It may be uh, an added feature that I hadn't thought of. Um pet friendly, that is I'd like to be told that you're pet friendly. Even if you've ticked the box and, and you're accepting my pets, I want that additional confidence that you are. Uh, Oceanside and a short walk to the beach. I like that. that that's, that's, I, I think they could do a little bit better because there's a longer, there's more, you, you need to take advantage of all the words that you're allowed in that, uh, that description. But that, that pretty much does it for me. So I'm going to leave this one. Just go back and have a look at your headlines. Go and have a look at other people's headlines. Find out what grabs you. What makes you think, i got to go here. I've got to put this on my bucket list. And then if that feature photo and the headline match up, even better because it's almost like a double whammy, really. Okay, I'm going back to photos now. Um, because it is the photos that sell your place. So a couple of my points are on the photos because these are, you know, they're, they're just so important. I, I had uh, an, a query from a potential new owner to my management company uh, a week or so back. And they said that they'd had their property on the listing sites. And they were doing it themselves, but they weren't getting the... They just weren't getting the traffic. They weren't getting the bookings. So they're thinking about going with an agency to uh, in, to increase their potential for getting bookings. So I went to the listing and I was just flabbergasted, really, at the, the really, really poor quality of the photos. And it was there. It was for, for, for anybody looking any lay person who was looking at those photos, they're going to be saying, this is why you're not getting bookings. And this is why you're not getting any inquiries. Because the photos were grainy. They were badly lit. 
They were too small. I mean, we've got this um, amazing opportunity now to show big photos, to show off our place. And if we're not, in, if, if every one of those photos is not of high quality, then you risk losing the potential of at least an inquiry. So it should really by now be a no-brainer. You know, if, um, if, if you follow anybody else as, as well as me in the vacation rental industry, you'll know that getting your photos professionally done or learning how to do them yourself professionally is, is one of the keys to getting interest in your property. Unless, you know, unless you are in some amazing location that, uh, that people just have to go to and they don't care what the property looks like, they just have to be there, then your, fo- your photos are, are just, you know, they're just so important. It should be a no-brainer. So if your photos are, as I say, grainy, badly lit, too small, I'm not going to go and inquire about your place because it tells me something about you as an owner. It tells me that you, you don't care. You really are not interested in how the place looks to a potential guest. I want to see, I want to see a great picture of the kitchen. We're coming to kitchens in a second. Uh, kitchens, bedroom, all the bedrooms. I taught, when I was talking to Amy Greener last week about uh, photography, um, and we were talking about bathrooms, and she said she was photographing a six-bedroom, five-bathroom property. And you know, do we put five bath, pictures of five bathrooms on the listing? Well, probably not. You, you have photos of all your bathrooms. You don't necessarily have to have them on the listing. But at least you have to have a couple of pictures of your bathrooms that show it as sparkling clean because that's what guests are looking for. You should consider the lighting on the photos. And I've got so many examples of such badly lit pictures that you can barely see. They're so dark. They've been done on the fly with an iPhone and with, with little care as to, as, as to how that picture is going to be perceived. So, you know, take, take a listen to last week's podcast with Amy Greener and um, have a think about honing your phot- photography skills and getting your pictures. If your pictures are dark, getting them lightened up, shooting them in RAW, using Lightroom, whatever, getting a professional photographer to take the pictures. Because if you've got great pictures, traffic to your website, your, your potential guests are going to perhaps make that inquiry or make that booking. And that's a lot better than them looking at the pictures and going, ah, yeah, I'm just going to move on to the next one. So as I move on to the next one, this, this also is about the photos because if your bedrooms and your beds in particular, if the beds look uncomfortable from the photos that you're showing of them, then you could very well be losing potential guests. And what I'm saying by the beds looking uncomfortable, if I want to see uh, a bed that looks, that, that is so inviting, I just want to climb in there. I want to climb in there right now. I know at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to be so comfortable in that bed. You know, if you're renting somewhere in a winter climate, then that bed has got to, to look really warm and cozy. Big, thick quilts, loads of, loads of throw cushions. It's so easy to create a good bed these days. I mean, just, you just have to go onto Pinterest or go to house and, and look at bedroom photos. I have, I have a Pinterest board which is dedicated to vacation rental staging. And I shall put a link to that on the show notes because that has a ton of beds on there, loads of pictures of beds, which will give you some inspiration to make your beds look amazing. The ones that I find totally uninspiring are are the ones with the 
looks like they've got a flat, ancient old comforter, two pillows, you know, on a, on a double bed, queen bed or a king bed. You must have on these photos at least two pillows per person and then just pile it up with your throw cushions as well just to make it look more sumptuous. But if if it just looks flat, if the if the if there's a bedspread and it's pulled up and it's pulled over the pillows, that bed is so uninviting. I am not even dreaming of booking with you. I'm so sorry you may have the best view in the world, the most fabulous waterfront, your only steps to Disney. Anything else, you might have a hot tub and be pet friendly and be a couple of minutes walk to the beach. And you might have grabbed me with all that. But if I'm now in there and look at your bedroom pictures and those beds don't look comfortable, you're out the window. Moving on to kitchens in the photographs. If the kitchen isn't sparkling, if it looks dull and I can't imagine cooking in it, if it's cluttered, I just don't want to think about it. I cook a lot on vacation and kitchens are really, really important to me. So I'm looking for, you know, shiny work surfaces. You know, the countertops don't have to be Corian or or granite or whatever fancy countertops there are out there now, quartz or whatever. It just has to look incredibly clean, uncluttered and inviting. So making sure that all your fridge magnets and and post-it notes are off the fridge before you take the photo. Again, it seems like a no-brainer, but there's a lot of kitchen photos out there which are an incredible turn-off. And if you think about it, even if you're in an area where there are a gazillion restaurants and, and your guests go out to cook most of the time, that doesn't matter. They still want to make their coffee they might want to make a snack. They might get up in the middle of the night and want to get something out of the fridge and, and have, a, have, a, have a midnight snack. That kitchen is important. It really is. So take a look at your kitchen images and, and choose the ones that, make it, that, that really make it shine, make it stand out and sparkle. Because if, if, it, if it looks ugly, if the photo's been taken with the dish drainer out, with a couple of old cloths hanging off the sink, and I've seen those, it's not going to be attractive. Okay, I think that takes me off photos, but you know, I, I, I've given a couple of examples of how photographs can be a huge turnoff and. If, if you've done the feature photo and the description right, but then you've drawn your potential guest into looking at the rest of the photos, just remember, in fact, that, that when your guest decides on the property, they're sharing those photos with absolutely everybody because everyone wants to see where they're going on, or show off where they're going off on vacation. So, you don't want to have any picture in there that's going to cause one of your guest's friends or acquaintances to, to cast any negative uh, aspect on the decision that the guest has made to, uh, to buy this vacation. So just make sure every photograph is one that you'd like to show absolutely anybody and everybody. Okay, let's move on to text. Here's some reasons I might not. I might not. It's not as it's not as important as the as the feature photo, the headline and the photos in general. But if the text is simply a description of the layout, it's just blah blah blah. You know, now you're telling me there's five bedrooms, there's three and a half bathrooms, there's so many queen beds. All this information is in the amenities. I can see this elsewhere. Don't waste that space. So, here's one example I was looking at this morning. Our vacation rental sleeps 10 in beds. Wow, I'm happy with that. I mean, I know what they're getting at. It's beds and not sofa beds. Um, But still, uh, with a king-size bed in the master bedroom, two queen-size beds in the second bedroom, and a king bed in the lockout third bedroom. Well, for a start, I don't know what a lockout is. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's 
it's a bedroom that's locked up. There's only four of you, perhaps that's taking two bedrooms, and they lock out, lock up the third bedroom. But that that's it's a little bit. The lockout is a bit of a negative. It 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 doesn't inspire me. Let's say the living room has a cable TV with DVD player. Okay, the dining table seat six. And is separated from the kitchen by a breakfast bar with bar stools. Yeah, great. I saw that on the pictures. Plenty of room for the whole family. The kitchen includes all major appliances, microwave and dishwasher, dishes and cutlery, and a washer dryer in the utility area. I'm, I'm mocking, and I and I probably shouldn't, but I let let's let's stop doing this. Let's stop. Pulling in all the a list of all the amenities into that very precious description, because I'm just turned off by that. Um, I want to know how this property is going to make me feel. I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here because this is one that I wrote for one of our cottages, um, on on our website. And it's a beautiful place, and we start. If your key criteria for the best cottage vacation ever is privacy great waterfront and a beautiful cottage. You can tick them off right now. This cottage has them all and plenty more. Let's start with the 200 feet of waterfront that offers clear water, a sandy beach with shallow entry and a dock to jump off. If that doesn't get you booking straight away, let's add in the crown land to one side and no visible cottages to the other. A neat bunkie the kids will just love and a beautiful Kawartha location. This is, I, I, I do my descriptions in, in many different ways. Uh, one of them is to start with the sort of the overview and, and then move in to grabbing them with some emotion on how they're going to feel about it. This particular property, because it, it just, it, it did tick the boxes for most people. Uh, I wanted to include that and that has worked absolutely like a charm. That property is our bestseller at the moment and uh and I had one lady said I got her on the first sentence so that shows it works here's another one this is from Michael Hamilton who you heard on the podcast a couple of weeks ago uh talking about vacation rental investments and this is from his chill beach and surf bungalow and he starts hear the sea breeze in the cedar trees Take in the clean ocean air and enjoy all the treasures of the outer banks while visiting the chill beach and surf bungalow. You'll live the OBX lifestyle and feel like a local residence, resident at our central location that is safe and private. Imagine the tranquility you'll feel like us as you drift away into a mellow mood in the relaxing and cozy bungalow. I, I love that because it's, it's capturing different senses. You'll know if you're a regular listener to the podcast that I talk about these different senses. You need to capture that within your description. If you don't, if you're just giving me the five bedroom, three and a half bathroom, sleeps 12, dining table accommodate six, you've lost me because I think I'm going to go on to somewhere else that's going to capture my attention more. The next one is not having an about us section. I think I've mentioned, I'm not going to dwell too much on this because I've mentioned it a lot, but you need to fill in that bit. You need to talk about you. Your guests want to know you. They want to know why you bought the place. If there's no about us section and I'm tossing up between several different properties in a, in a location like Nicaragua, um, then it's incredibly important. I know who the owner is, you know, are they, do, do they speak English? Um, why did they buy the place? Is it, is it safe? Are they happy there? All this, all this stuff I'm getting directly from the owner. I want to know them, uh, know about them and why they love the place. Um, the about us section also gives me the, gives me an idea of how I'll be welcomed. Um, and also owners who know the area and say they want to share all they know is going to grab, you know, that's going to grab my interest. Um, Shireen McClellan, I talked to recently about her property in Kanab in Utah. And her about her section is excellent. It, it, describes, it describes why she and her husband bought the place, 
the year-long renovation to create a super space for guests. And there is so much passion in that section that if I was looking for a place in Kanab, that's one I would choose specifically because I like, I like the owner. I want to know her better. And, and I'm really delighted that she's going to share that place with me because it shows from the About Us section that this is something she really wants to do. So if you haven't done your About Us section, get there and, and do it because that, that could be the difference in somebody making an inquiry and someone moving on to another listing that has a better about us section. So I'm just going to touch on a couple of um, things about reviews. And review, reviews aren't necessarily a reason for me to say, I won't inquire about your property. Particularly in negative ones. People write negative reviews. I know that they 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 have gripes and they want to voice them. There's just those people out there. You see them trolling around Facebook all the time. They've got they've got some sort of anonymity and they want to just get out there and and make a point. However, there are two types of review comments or you know, that there are issues that are raised in reviews that are an immediate turn off for me. The first one is reviews that complain about cleanliness. And I think for every guest in any property, cleanliness is a really high priority. So if there are, not not necessarily if there's only, if there's one review that's a gripe about some sand on the floor or a dust bunny under the bed, that's not going to bother me that much. But three or four Four star reviews where where they're saying it's a, it was a fabulous location, they had a wonderful time, but they wish it had been a bit cleaner, or they wish that the vacuum had worked, or it would have been nice if cleaning materials had been left behind. Those things, those are all little indicators to me that this property is possibly not going to meet my criteria, and I might not go any further with an inquiry for it. These are often, um, I hesitate to say this because I know I have a lot of listeners in the property management uh, community, but these are often managed properties where where there's a, a very high turnover, cleaning staff are doing dozens of properties in a day, and and maybe you know things things get missed, but if they're getting missed over and over again, then there is an issue. Um, so. Just just keep an eye on your reviews and just if you ever get a cleanliness review, um, that, that's an issue. It, it needs to be dealt with straight away and, and with, and this leads into my next point, it needs to be dealt with with a non-defensive response because that's the next one. I'm like any other traveler. When I'm looking at a vacation rental listing, I go to the reviews and I, of course, I'm going to go to the negative ones. You know, I can see all these superlatives from all these people who say it was fantastic. We had an amazing time and the owners were, were, went overboard to make us feel comfortable. But I want to see the negative ones. I want to see what it, what, why has somebody in amongst those 30, 40, 50 plus reviews, five star reviews, why has somebody given a three star or a two star or one star or whatever? And I want to go read that. So often with those negative reviews, it's just glaringly obvious that the person has had an axe to grind. Maybe they've, they've you know, so some issue arose that maybe wasn't handled as well as it could have been, or, or they're just generally grumpy people. You know, it rained for a week, so they're going to negatively review the property because of that. Now, those are usually real standouts. And that doesn't impact my decision in the slightest. You know, usually by that time, when I've, I've looked at everything else on the listing and I'm now looking at the reviews, I am pretty much committed to at least making an inquiry or putting this on a short list. 
But if I ever come across a negative review that has a defensive response, it's I'm just not going to uh, I'm not going to go there um, because the you know, the the response that owners give to negative re- negative reviews, particularly if they if they seem to be justified in any way, regardless of the way that the guest has posted the review or the language they've used. No negative review ever is just justifies a damning defensive response about how awful that guest was. Um, it's it's just completely unnecessary, and and I I you know I know that that wish to to get your own back. I I just know that wish to put it out there on paper or on online that says, well, if you hadn't done this and done that, or if you had read, read the instructions, you wouldn't have encountered this problem. We, we want to, we want to fight back in some way. And, and I've seen this over and over again, that owners fall into that trap of fighting back online rather than just offering a bland or, or offering a heartfelt apology for for the way that the guest felt. I mean, you have you have no um, you have no way of controlling the way that they felt or the, the way that they reacted, but you can offer them an apology for that feeling being incurred. And then simply, you know, if there's something that, that they pointed out that you did that was wrong or there was something wrong with the property, just simply say how you're going to handle that. That's easy. And then take any argument offline. Just go to them directly, say you're really upset or you don't have to take say you're upset, that you're concerned about the nature of the review they posted and is there anything they can you can do to help them out and to make them feel better about it? Um it's it just taking taking anger and emotion out of it is 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 the more dignified and graceful way of handling a negative response so that 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 really is one that uh, that i find interesting when i've gone through a listing and you might have a hundred fabulous reviews one negative review and the owner has come back and and really come across as being a, not a nice person themselves in the way that they've answered that review. So I'll be interested to hear your uh, I'll be interested to hear your feedback on that one. Um finally now down, down to number 10, um the one thing that the, the last thing that would perhaps deter me from making an inquiry about your property is how often the calendar has been updated and the speed of response. Um all these sites now are showing a speed of response. If your speed of response is is over 48 hours, I want to book and and I want to pretty much book now. So that could be, it, it might not deter me from making that inquiry if everything else was perfect, but it would be a, 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 it would be a concern. So you want to be looking at how, having that calendar updated frequently and, and making sure that your response rate is, is at least within 24 hours. So there you go. That is my sort of 10 reasons I won't be inquiring about your property. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to fit into, a property doesn't have to fit into all 10. It might just be one. Uh, as I said at the beginning, if that feature photo doesn't do it, then I'm on to the next one. So, but, but some of them, as I just said, I can get all the way through and then just be blown away by a response to a negative review. So everything's important. It really is. I'm going back to, in the course of doing this, as I said, I've, I've looked at some of my own listings and I need to go back and I'm going to make some, um, make, make some small changes to headlines. I'm going to look at the uh, feature photos, check that every photo I'm including is a good one, and and that all those bedrooms look fabulous. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're listening to this on publication date, then I am 
I am winging my way back to Toronto from Amsterdam. And, and we'll look forward to getting home because, of course, now I can start looking forward to the Vacation Rental Success Summit. Um, I really want to hang out with you. And please, think about coming. Think about coming. I'd love to meet you face-to-face, have a chat, sit down, have a coffee, have a drink. Um, the food and the food at the BMO Center, where which is where Vacation Rental Success Summit is, is held, is second to none. You will not find better food at a conference venue ever. So, you know, come and, and we'll sit down and have dinner together or lunch or whatever. Let's hang out. So go to vacationrentalsuccesssummit.com or email me directly at heather at cottageblogger.com for a discount code. And I hope to see you there. But in any case, uh, I will be talking to you again next week with my, my overview of Vacation Rental Management Association Europe and all the great people I met there. So until then, thanks so much again for listening and I'll be with you again soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. Oh, 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 oh